Whew. Hey guys, uh, welcome back to a new episode of, well, whatever, restoring this bucket, I suppose. Though restoration is a big word. Um, quick update since the last video that came out ages ago. Uh, again, life just gets in the way and there are personal issues that I don't want to talk about on this <laughs> channel because it's not about it. Uh, the car. It's back in my garage and if you can see I've got light, I've got electricity finally and <laughs> uh, as you guessed the guys on the axle stands I've been doing uh, little jobs here and there it's all dusty to be honest I haven't touched it for I don't I don't know for how long but um, Jay and I have finished the seals I already treated them with some uh, denatural seam seal, it's 401, yeah, I think it's German, uh, whatever, so it's denatural, it's a good thing, um, as the seam sealer goes, and then I just sprayed everything with, um, let me show you really quickly, uh, this little guy, and this is... Um, rust killer barrier system at least it says uh, it says on on the tin and uh, yeah it's it's quite an interesting product you spray it and you leave it it's just like milky substance and then dries and it turns into this you can see where i uh kind of made a mess and yeah it kind of turns into this really solid film and uh basically it protects I think it reacts with rust, turning into, uh, yeah, that's it, and it gets black when it's dry. See, this is not paying, this is all that hydrate, whatever thingy. And yeah, I've never used it before, um, heard a lot of positive things, and many people use it. Decided to give it a go, why not? Can't get any worse. I mean, it's already a rusted bucket, so uh, yeah. Um, what else? Uh, oh yeah, I did buy myself a new steering wheel simply because I like the way it is. I chipped out on the uh, hubs and probably I should have done that if you buy that kind of like energy short hub you're gonna hit your stocks every time you turn so I had to buy the quick release as well. Uh, again some Chinese knockoff and um, overall it's sitting quite okay I guess uh, I didn't want to have a quick release I've never had one before but it works the um, yeah I, I'm using the uh, resistor from uh, the RX-8 boss hub by the way RX-8 I well it's sold, it should be collected uh, in a couple of days. Uh, just don't have time to work on cars, well, not on as many cars at the same time, so for now I'm just gonna keep the Lex. And I also have another Lex, which is IS200 Sport. There it is. And this is my daily for now. Uh, yeah, what else? bought this little thingy it doesn't do anything i guess <sighs> waste of money time well i didn't spend much time hooking up but overall probably you should buy yourself a normal like a proper boost controller uh what else oh yeah so if you're gonna buy patch panels from eBay. Bear in mind that the shape of the seal at the back is kind of different. It just like flares out, creating this shape. And let me show you, I've got some cutoffs. Well, I bought two, so I think I can repair like 10 more Lexuses. So you can see the shape of the seal is just basically a stamped steel and it's all straight so it doesn't actually mimics the uh, 
just stay there. It it doesn't mimics the shape of the whole seal, so it's it's a good time saver. It's uh, it's great if you want to bypass that stage of shaping up. Ah, uh, shit metal itself, and I think it was seventy or eighty quid for the pair. So if you planning to fix just one car, buy one. They're symmetrical. Uh, yeah, I also started replacing the uh, this ugly random bolts from I don't know where with it's a little bit nicer reef nuts like you can see. And again, I couldn't make it work as I wanted because the, the holes were already there. So I was like, yeah, okay, I'll fix it. Well, maybe sometime when I uh, I don't know. I, I honestly I don't want to go too deep into changing the look of the car um, same idea practice car uh, I know I said the same thing about the RX-8 but yeah I think it just for me makes more sense as a platform boring car very slow um, but they're relatively cheap parts are everywhere engine gearboxes uh, still reasonably priced um, so going to the main point of this video today we are going to be swapping this lovely is200 diff out for a lovely gt86 diff yes you heard me right the diffs from gt86 fits is200 but you would need a few extra bits and pieces so first of all you need a diff itself. This is 2012, um, I think, auto diff. Uh, the difference between auto and manual in that year, at least in the UK, I think auto is the, fi the final gear is a bit longer. Um, can't give you the right numbers about by how much, but overall they're the same. Both uh, have Dorsen diff which is great the diff itself is much bigger than your is200 diff uh, the other parts that you need are well drive shafts from is300 yes drive shafts from is300 do work with gt86 because it's practically the same diff and um, if you have an is300 and want to swap uh, it for um, um, I mean, you've got IS300 with an open diff and you want to upgrade it to an um, LSD diff, you can get GT86 diff and just swap it around. You don't need all this extra, just swap the diff itself. But if you like me swapping from uh, IS200, I think it's uh, seven. Well, you can't see me. Um, yeah, okay, that's better. Uh, so, stock IS200 diff, I think there's seven inch in diameter i mean the, the crown wheel um gt86 chasers i mean jz x i think 190 they also came with uh eight inch diffs is 300 same story um it's a bit more complicated uh, on the lsd part some of them came with lsd some of them not but the long or short uh, if you want an upgrade if you want an LSD just buy yourself a uh, GT86 diff again here in the UK they all came with a Torsen diff as standard I'm not sure about other countries I think in US there was like a standard version and a, like a premium so one didn't have an LSD as stock uh, a standard and yeah so just do your research and um, as I said, it depends on the country. I think post 2017, I think when the, they changed the facelift, they introduced a base model uh, here in the UK as well. So if you're going for a later model, which again has a slightly shorter gearing, so your acceleration will be better. Um, yeah, just bear in mind, I bought the auto diff because it was the cheapest and Overall, I got it from eBay delivered to my doorstep for 450 pounds. Not your cheapest upgrade, and with the 
drive shafts and a prop shaft. It's the rear half of the prop shaft from IS300, which I didn't tell you. So if you're going from um, seven, eight inch IS200, if you also need to replace the um, rear end of the prop shaft. I think the uh, diff itself is a little bit shorter so your prop shaft will have a gap and you won't be able to tighten it in. There are ways to go about it like people adjust the uh, the main it's not the bearing it's like the center thing that kind of like holds two two pieces together. You can play around with that. People say it will destroy the um, the diff, the internals. I've never done it. I didn't want to risk it. So overall, the cost of the of this conversion is 450 diff, uh, 150 prop shafts, well, uh, drive shafts, and another 50 quid for the um, half of the prop shaft. So. Overall, together, it's 650 pounds, which is not your budget mod, but at the same time, you're getting stronger diff, stronger drive shafts, uh, and you've got an LSD, which is from a newer-ish car. And yeah, that's the idea. I didn't want to go welded just yet. I just want to try having a proper LSD. And uh, in my old Data 6, LSD worked like perfectly fine every time. It was locking up very nicely. So I hope um, it's gonna be fun. And uh, in the next video, we will be able to test it somewhere on, well, in Mexico. Uh, yeah, so this is it. I'm gonna change and go under the car, start undoing everything. It's not very complicated. I don't know if I'm gonna film it because it's, yeah, it's, it's not the most fascinating thing to watch. Maybe a quick time lapse. We'll see. Uh, but see, see you in a sec. And well, here you can see how bad the rear end is. I also like don't know what these are for. I suspect that someone was running very big, very well, you know, wing at the back, and they left these mounting points, brackets, or whatever probably should take off because they weigh like a ton look at them like they're thick i think they're like at least four or five mil thick and it's like a solid plate that goes around there yeah doesn't look factory to me to be honest unless you're towing um, a tanker or something i don't know i think i might by disconnecting the prop shaft and the drive shafts or axle shafts whatever you want to call them in your part of the world and yeah we're gonna drop the center section I think after we take the diff out maybe I still wanna wanna see if it actually true I mean people say it's true that uh, the uh, stock s200 prop shaft is shorter than uh, required so that would be interesting interesting thing or fact to confirm or debunk depends on how you look at it uh, also these i don't know if you can see them but these braces they're kind of in a way you can remove your shafts out without removing these braces but believe me it's much easier and the exhaust is kind of in a way but I don't want to do anything with the exhaust it's oh, it's all like crap welded and yeah I just need I need a little bit of extra cashew to uh, 
make it a little bit nicer. I know it's like it's this kind of worth it, but I just can't can't stand it. Every time I'm under here, it's just like. <sighs> so yeah, let's grab. I think these are seventeen, sixteen. Um, maybe 14, 7? I don't remember. They don't look that beefy. Uh, same on the uh, axle shafts. I think they're the same size. Uh, probably you can't see anything, guys, but yeah, believe me. Uh, they're the same. I think last time I had to undo the anterior bar from these brackets. Maybe I didn't. I don't remember. There's not a lot of room here that's the only thing that kind of like bothers me i was thinking maybe i can cut this section out or just hammer it in and just just to get myself better access to to the diff if i'm gonna do this uh i wouldn't call on a regular base but you know what i mean all right so stock is 200 bolts or nuts are 14 mils and the prop shaft is the same so grab yourself a 14 inch well 14 inch 14 mil spanner and enjoy all the fun oh yeah by the way you need to lock the uh the drivetrain otherwise uh it's gonna be quite tricky let me Mount you on the ground. Well, I cannot mount you to the ground, I think. Uh, lefty loosey to righty tighty. Got to be the right way, is it? Uh, if you're not sure, grab yourself a ratchet and spin it in the way that it's gotta go. So, yeah, I was doing it in the wrong way, so it's this way it's because I'm lying upside down ah, yeah and it's not too bad even as I said I replaced this diff like a couple of months ago and I barely drove it so everything should be okay ish ish that's the key not even a word but you get what I mean don't you Okay, keep the hardware around in case we need it. Probably we might need it at some point in life, so... Damn it. Are you kidding me? Okay, you've got to see it. <laughs> I thought why the rear was a bit clunky. Uh, this is why I lost one of the <laughs> bolts that hold the diff in place. <laughs> I don't know why, I tightened them like really, really hard. Oh, okay, I need to find a spare bolt. Uh, well, probably I will order GT86 ones because I think they're a little bit shorter. So technically I won't be able to complete everything in one day. Uh, why are you doing this to me? Hello again guys, um, yeah that's the next day. I didn't do much yesterday simply because I was a little bit disappointed by a few discoveries uh, first of all and it's not a major one but I discovered why the, the rear end was clunking every time I would just like set off so um, one of the diff bolts was missing and it's probably on me. I thought I torqued it but apparently not so on the way back from Jay's unit uh, to my garage somewhere it just fell off and Jay told me actually um, now like in retrospect it makes sense uh, because he was following me and uh, something fell off and I heard the metal clank and he told me there was something round and jumping like um, yeah so it was bouncing off the road and uh, nearly hit his car now i know what it was it was that washer the big washer that goes um between the bolt and the diff um 
So that's one part of the yesterday's disappointment. Another one, which is far more serious, and uh, I don't know how to go about that. That's why I kind of like stopped yesterday. Uh, this is. I don't know if you guys can see, but this has to be straight, and uh, there is some damage here, so it's not straight. And if I put in, yeah, I think it's easier to see what's going on here with the prop shaft aligned. So you can see there is a gap about two mils. It will work, I think, and the diff is not binding, so I don't think there is any internal damage but I kind of I don't know if I should put it in and see how it feels uh, with this kind of damage it might vibrate at high rpms so I contacted the seller yesterday and uh, they were like yeah send it back well we found you everything which is Good. The problem is finding another diff here in the UK is a bit difficult. Uh, they're not. I mean, there are a bunch of cars, but nobody breaks them quite often. So uh, probably will be another couple of months. Well, maybe just weeks until I find another one. I looked at importing one from the states, and with all the charges, import fees, delivery they are end up around 500 which is not that much more but i just don't it's just like the wait time again it might take another month to uh, get it down here uh so i think i'm just gonna go and um, put this one in see if it works if it does i'm just gonna keep driving it if it's not i'll remove it and send it back to the seller which is uh for fair enough um the ad didn't describe any damage so and there was no pictures of that particular uh spot so i just yeah some sometimes you win sometimes you lose um the only downside is time i guess i wanted to put it back on the road and uh, the weather is nice so it's kind of like uh, almost summer perfect time for practicing uh but yeah probably i'll have to wait i don't know uh jay should come over later today and help me with the div um still with the bolt missing um i tried uh getting it uh from local breakers but it's the weekend and uh, they're not uh in their shops uh so probably it's gonna be monday i found uh, a guy who breaks gt86s and um, so one one little thing and i think i'm gonna go um in a bit of detail uh about the stuff that you need for this conversion like bolts and basically the hardware um your standard bolt uh, that hold the diff those two bolts that hold the diff uh IS 200s and I think IS 300s the same. They are a little bit longer, so you either need to use washers or buy a new GT86 bolts, um, which are slightly shorter. Either way will work. Uh, if I had two bolts, I would just use washers and compensate the lengths with the um, washers, but because I don't have one and um, there's a local breaker like 20 miles from where I live um, he said that he might uh, have the IS200 bolts um, but again it will be until Monday uh, meanwhile I contacted that guy who breaks the T86s and he said he got he probably <laughs> he probably does have um, bolts so um, yeah might might go with gta six bolts so it's just more well less less botched <laughs> I, I mean it's not it's not even botching also another thing that i had to buy is these bolts because i bought the draft shaft drive shafts and they didn't come with the bolts i also have like um 
brackets slash washers and um, yeah I think I'm gonna skip on this I'll, I just bought regular spring washers and just gonna bolt them like that uh, we'll see how it goes I don't think uh, it will affect a lot I'm, I'm gonna mark everything so if something does come loose over time uh, I'll I'll know, uh, yeah, so I'll be mo monitoring this and if I need to I'll buy those like um, bracket, washer, whatever. Uh, they're expensive, it's like for what they are, it's, uh, I think it's like people want five pounds for each and it's like 12. So yeah, do the math, just like a lot for um, a tiny thing that just, yeah, I don't know if I... I mean, I think engineers put it there for a reason, so probably I'll end up buying them or just finding um, used ones. Um, but yeah, for now I'm just gonna try and see how it goes. Uh, so yeah, these these bolts are M12, uh, 1.25 pitch thread, and I went with. Um, 60 mil length what should be plenty actually I, I'm saying it should be plenty but I did not I did not test it so maybe I'm missing something else so um, yeah this is the drive shaft no it should be alright so 60 60 mil as you can see goes in quite nicely and there's some room for washer which is awesome so Hardware, as I said, M12, 1.25 pitch, 60 mil or longer. The nuts, uh, the hub nuts uh, are identical. So IS200, IS300, same pitch, same size. You don't have to buy new ones unless you want to. You can reuse those. And in terms of uh, prop shafts, and drive shafts, stock IS200, uh, everything is just 14 mil drive and a prop. So uh, you go in with two 14 mil wrenches and you can undo pretty much everything. Um, yeah, so this is it. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna change again and go under the car, get the old diff out. We'll try to put this one in and uh, yeah, I'm just gonna leave it like that until I source that missing bolt. And hopefully uh, next next week the car is gonna be on the ground and um, we can take it for a spin. I'm not sure if I'm gonna make a separate video on that or it's gonna be one long when we finish it all and take it on a test drive. We'll see, we'll see. Uh, if it's not too long probably it's gonna be just one uh, yeah anyways uh, let's go Well, time to side-by-side -side comparison. So this is the bolt that I'm currently missing. I've got only one. And uh, you can see the difference in size, I hope. And this one is much lighter. <laughs> this is heavy. <laughs> this is very heavy. So um, I already installed the IS300, the inner pieces of the shaft so they're all in they're fine I decided to kind of try and go with it I know that's this is not ideal I'm probably gonna be <laughs> I, I'll, I'll regret it down the road but for now uh, yeah I'll just wanna put it in and uh, drive it around and if I need to take it out again it's to be honest, it's not that difficult. It only took me with all the with all the brakes, with all the um, 
there are distractions I think just over a couple of hours uh, and I was doing it really really slowly um, I like 350Z it's a piece of cake like I can do it anywhere anytime I think the, the biggest problem is if you have rusted bolts that's that's an issue but it's an issue on any old car especially here in the UK so yeah I think as a platform it's very easy to work and uh, that's one of the main reasons why I decided to, to go and I stick to this platform at least for now and practice it everything is easy bunch of stuff that can be put from different cars J that access whatever so um, yeah now I just need to remove the drive shafts which to be honest I've never done before I, I well as far as I know I just need to hammer them out because everything is disconnected you can see the end of the drive shaft over there um, yeah it should just slide right off they're just splines that holding everything in place uh, yeah let's see how it goes So going back under and uh, the shafts are oh, almost free. I just need to keep hammering on the other one, but yeah, this one. Yeah, it's, it's really hard to actually film, keep the camera clean from all the grease, and uh, maneuver anything else under the car. So I apologize for this, but as you can see, one is out okay the shafts are out i think the driver's side on a uk car well i mean the right hand drive car the length is different this one came out of the right side and this one came out of the left side so i asked 300 get the same let's check out how Girly, they really are so the IS 300 is 29.3 millimeters so almost three three centimeters it's uh inch uh well it just over an inch and the IS 200 is just over yeah just about an inch thick so once again 29 25 I mean there's some rust but let's call it 29 versus 26 yeah well strangely enough this is 27 almost 28 millimeter interesting so yeah one is thinner than the other one so this is the, um, the driver's side let's see if these are different 29 29 no the the ice 300s are I mean the shaft the drive shafts actual shafts shafts are <laughs> Uh, the same. I don't know, maybe they came out of a different car. No idea, but this one is 
definitely take a buy almost well not just almost over almost two mils yep so this is some numbers for people who care about numbers and um, yeah as you can see there's a obvious difference even just uh, looking at them side by side and the diffs you can see how big this one is just for kind of like reference Whew. so I guess now I just need to take the um, old prop shaft out and uh, check the lengths and see if uh, there is any difference as people claim um, yeah that would be interesting to check for 100% like oh Jay this is Jay Jay has come come over here come over here Come over here, big boy. Ah, welcome back to another day. <laughs> yeah, yet another day. We were supposed to be a three hour job. Taking me three days. <laughs> Usual car stuff, you know, guys. Uh, and in this case, yesterday when Jake came around and uh, helped me a little bit we hit a bit of a snag and this is this is it basically these two collars or let's better say dust shields they are mounted behind the the hub and what they do when the drive shaft is in they kind of like seal everything in and your ABS sensor uh, well just stays clean ish but with time and this is a uh, 2001 car so it's 20 years old car you can see like some focus in some rust built up over time here and uh, I think this one this one became split this is not me this is how it was so the ABS ring on the shaft let me show you so this is old IS200 shaft and you can see how damaged it is like the ABS ring this is your ring and it's kind of like sits inside and uh, this this groove sits inside this uh, metal ring so it's kind of like seals it up a little bit and this is the uh, slot for your ABS sensor so in theory it just slides on and the entire thing is protected from dust, grime, small stuff, debris, whatever can, that can get in here and uh, not destroy it, I don't think it's gonna destroy anything but kind of like uh, build up dirt can uh, uh, give you some troubles with your ABS sensor well, you can see how uh, yeah if it's focus on the actual teeth you can see how shallow they are like they are grounded down to, to the core and on a normal shaft well this one is a little bit better but this is IS300 shaft and you can see how much more meat there is on the teeth so yesterday when I put this shaft in it just got completely stuck I couldn't turn it I couldn't do anything now though like without that wheel in the place <laughs> well in place this spins freely and this is how it's supposed to be um, if you don't have this issue so basically uh, the first sign will be when you're removing your old um, drive shafts axle shafts they should just slide out uh, without any resistance if you saw the whole video you saw that I was hammering them out 
that's that's a clear sign that something is off. Another one, when you're installing the new ones, they just, again, they sh should slide in and the wheel can be spin freely by hand. Um, yeah, I'm just, yeah, already uh, split the new glove. Uh, yeah, anyways, that is, if it, if you feel some sort of resistance, if it doesn't go in smoothly, probably something is in the way. Um, either something got trapped in this collar or it bent or something like that. In my case, uh, the ends around the, the slot where the ABS sensor goes in, they were like raised up. So the rust behind them kind of like pushed them inwards so they weren't circular anymore and they were just like, grinding the teeth on the ABS ring. Uh, yeah, as I said, I just, it, it took us a while with Jay. There's not much room, to be honest, to get inside and uh, hammer it from different sides. Uh, if you have a small Dremel, uh, well, small, just Dremel, you can probably get in and cut it in half. And But basically we use the same technique or method, if you wanna go with that. Basically how you remove your uh, <laughs> bushings from um, subframe. Same idea, you kind of like slot it, you hammer it in, and you're just trying to fold it in, so it just like loses its shape and pops right out. Um, yeah, took a while, took a while, um, but yeah, eventually we did it. And now, um, as I said, it's day three, it's the morning. I I'm planning to just like put everything back in and uh, yeah I'm still waiting for those bolts uh, I found I found uh, GT86 bolts so uh, ideally they should they should fit right on I saw pictures and they're a little bit different they've got threads at the bottom so uh, let me show you uh, so this is a stock IS2 ah, damn it I've got way too much stuff uh, around the car, but I'm gonna clean it up after that is done. So basically, your diff bolt that holds the diff in place, you got two, and um, you can see the threads are only at the top. The pictures that I got from the breaker, uh, the, the bolt itself looks pretty much the same, but it does have some threading, well, threads, at the bottom as well and I checked the diff there are no threads inside the I mean who would put threads inside the bushing so that's an interesting interesting little detail that I thought might be uh, might be worth sharing so uh, yeah I hope this will be uh, sort of like a guide if you want to do this relatively straightforward <laughs> Bolt on swap. It should help you a little bit. And yeah, if you find something interesting along the way, uh, probably you can share it in the comments. Um, but yeah, let's 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 finish it. And uh, I'll show you how easy the the drive shaft should like just slide in on the other side. I just need to um, change. And uh, yeah, <clears throat> we'll be back in a sec, guys. If you remember, I was talking about that you need prop shaft from IS300, well, the rear half of it. And at first I was skeptical. They looked very much the same, though the um, uh, this joints, I think they're a little bit beefier on i 300 but not by much. Uh, the difference though, yes, they look they look very much the same, but IS200, which is this one that you're currently looking at, is five mil longer. Yes. And I'm gonna show you on the picture in a sec. I, yeah, this is uh, where you can see that the one is just, just a little bit longer. And at first glance, it looks negligible, but I, I don't think, well, Personally, I read a few things on the forums, but 
I take everything with a grain of salt, same with the final gear in the <laughs> this one. Yes, there was uh, kind of trying to figure out what the final gear is and uh, I read on the forum that the auto is longer, which didn't make any sense. Well, didn't make much sense because usually autos are shorter. And I did count the number of revolutions on the and it's yeah, it's actually four, maybe a 4.1. So actually the diff is shorter, <laughs> which is not a problem. I had the um, IS200 diff from an auto car. Um, I think at, well, at 70 miles an hour, according, you can't see me. Uh, yeah, the lighting is better now. So uh, when you're driving at 70 miles an hour, um, at a speedometer, the actual speed is about 63-ish miles. Uh, so you've got some discrepancy there. Acceleration, yes, it's a little bit better, but I wouldn't say by much. I mean, if, if it's a stock car and it, this is the only upgrade that you've done, probably you'll notice the difference. I, I didn't, to be honest. Like, I drove it and um, it was pretty much the same thing, so... If you think it's an upgrade, maybe, but I, I doubt. So if you have manual diff, whether it's D86 or S200, and you want to weld it or whatever, uh, yeah, I w basically my point is don't hunt specifically for uh, an auto diff, at least in my experience, the, the difference is so negligible it's not worth it if you can get a manual diff much cheaper than auto go go with manual that's no-brainer uh yeah so um this is the shutter side of the well the whole drivetrain yeah because the the diff if you can see it's not symmetrical this side is kind of like pushed in here now well, this is where the longer drive shaft goes and this is the shutter side so now we just need to go under the car and slide this boy in and I hope that I can do it just by myself with the camera pointing in my face and you actually ah uh, uh, yeah so the idea is, uh, it's probably a little bit dark-ish under here. Uh, let me swap you guys around so you're actually looking at the uh, hub. So as I said, apologies for it being a little bit dark. Uh, wait, wait a second, I'm gonna bring some light. Uh, maybe, maybe not. Yeah, no light for, for now. Anyways, so... If you did everything correct and you have your ring, uh, your ring, uh, this is where the ring that I show you later sits. And if you hammer it out, I sprayed some uh, rust, well, paint. Again, I can do it now. It doesn't, I, I don't think it's gonna do much, but whatever. Uh, just for my peace of mind. So you've got your shaft. You line it up, the splines, and if everything is correct, it should just slide in like so. And then you go in and uh, use your nut to bring bring it all the way in. Uh, let me show you from the other side. It's very tight under here. So just went in, the nut as I said, you can reuse your old nut from IS200, it goes in, very nice, this is a 32 mil, you need So this is a 32mm socket, 
go in. So this is a 32 mil socket. Again, apologies for bad lighting, but yeah, now you can see I can spin it freely. There's no binding. It just it just works. So this is how it's supposed to be. You put this little thing on it, and the cotter pin goes back in again. Ideally, we should use new stuff. I'm, um, well, I am what I am, so I'm just reusing the old ones. Uh, it's not broken, it's still fine, will serve its purpose till uh, the next upgrade. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, this is it. This is basically your IS300 shaft uh, in, in IS200 hub. Um, yeah, it just just works. Uh, what else? Yeah, in my case, I need to put the um, spacers, but I think I might not do it simply because I want to replace the um, handbrake um, shoes, well, pads, whatever. They're just behind the um, brake discs, uh, so I need to undo the caliper. But yeah, that's the story for another day. Uh, probably will do it while I'm waiting for the diff bolts. Uh, anyways, uh, yeah, so now I'm gonna clean up under the car, give myself a little bit of room. I need to fill the diff with the diff oil. And uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's very much it. I'm just gonna... Uh, get on a jack, jack it up, and try to align with everything and bolt it right on. See you on the other side. This is a success. Well, 90% there. Well, I'd say it's 100% there, simply because the diff is in the car. So this is GT86 diff with IS300 drive shafts inside an IS200 and then everything went relatively okay I still need to tighten everything up uh, it's all finger tight at the moment simply because I didn't want to get it all done up and then figure out that something is not lining up or I need something else so I decided to kind of like go in and uh, just, as I said, finger tight everything. The prop shaft, yes, you do need the IS300 prop shaft because otherwise the IS200 is a little bit longish, so you will be struggling a little bit with that. So strongly recommend getting uh, the rear half of the IS300. Uh, as you can see, this bolt is still missing, don't have one. Uh, the I put the one that I do have on the other side and as the forum said, it's a bit longer. You can get away with uh, maybe five mil of washers, just stack them on and they'll work. Otherwise, just get yourself a pair of GT86 bolts. Uh, the rear ones are interchangeable. Uh, I still have my uh, Allen key in. So if you are interested, this is a 12 mil head. So they're quite chunky. Um, yeah, the small trick with the drive shafts, axle shafts, whatever you want to call them again, um, because I was doing it on my own, I just cable tie them uh, so everything is lined up and they're not going anywhere. This way I managed to put one side in, then the other one. It was a bit problematic. Uh, ideally, I would take this back box off but because mine is all welded all the way to I guess uh, I, I don't know if the downpipe is welded to the exhaust but everything is welded so I didn't want to grind it up uh, in a perfect world yes if you can take this off just undo like two extra bolts behind there you can see that flange and your life is gonna be so much easier you also need to undo these two braces, I don't have them. As I said, they make everything easier. 
if you don't remove them the um, drive shafts won't go all the way down and sometimes you just need that room I think you might get away with just leaving them on but yeah it's just literally two extra bolts on each side um, very easy to undo and yeah this way you'll have nothing in your way well in my case the, the exhaust is in the way uh, also to get to the rear bolts I disconnected uh, the rear internal bar just from the top mounts so you don't have to remove it entirely it just give you it will give you enough clearance to kind of like get in uh, if you can't put the uh, socket on this allen key and I strongly recommend getting a set of uh, this allen keys uh, you can use a 10 mil open spanner just put the allen key in and use the spanner to crack them open and uh, yeah this is how I kind of like got them out because if you even if you can get um, a ratchet with the socket in at certain point uh, you'll figure out that it's so backed out so you can't yeah get the socket out or uh, ratchet so yeah strongly recommend getting these stubby ones uh, what else I think uh, as far as it goes that's pretty much it I put new oil in it the GT86 diff takes about uh, 1.2 liters of oil I went with the red line um, yeah nothing nothing super exciting or particularly odd about it just like yeah good oil uh, I also would recommend if you do change oil do it off the car this way you can just uh, these uh, drain plug and fuel plugs uh, they're 10 mil and they are quite rusty so uh, soak them in WD do it on off the car put your oil in put the diff in it doesn't make it I mean it's one at 1.2 liters of oil yes it's gonna be a little bit heavier but in the grand scheme of things it's nothing compared to the weight of the thing so yeah uh, what else yeah as you can see here when the drive shaft is going into the hub I don't have this ring uh, dust boot whatever you want to call it uh, it might get dirty but as I said it's not a daily car so I'm not too fast about it if I need to remove it I'll just like remove the hub probably swap the hubs not the end of the world uh, how difficult was it oh, okay the, the lighting is like your horror style movie uh, so sorry about that so the difficulty I'd say it's five out of ten uh, totally doable by yourself Jay helped me a little bit but um, I put the new diff in. It's a little bit harder than uh, your IS200 diff simply because it's heavy and uh, beefier uh, so you'll struggle a little bit. Remove the back box. Literally the back box is in the way. Um, other than that yeah it's, it's relatively straightforward. It's a simple bolt on. Uh, you might hit a few snags but it's just rusty bolts, old car, nothing, nothing particularly complicated and I think in the long run it will worth it. I cannot take it on a test drive in this one but the next episode is where we're gonna start with the test drive so stay tuned and see you in the next one.